live from Jewett Studios in New York. This is the Kishwani and I'm Yasfly Boynstein. I'll be at 8 o'clock in Mir Tashem. As I was to fill it to the Rebbein Shloidam, let's say together, Tati, Abba, Daddy, please give us that slach this hour the way you've always done. Remember, I believe in you, I trust you, you are important and you'll succeed. All you have to do is try, just do it. Hence the introduction, just do it. Well, tonight we have a very chas of a guest, a very special guest who was here already once, um, a scientist par excellence. His name is Maya Licht. Maya is here today as he's preparing all his stuff his wires and, I don't know what, batteries, whatever, and his, um, what is it called, liquid nitrogen, and all the other things. I have a smashing show for you tonight, Met Hashem, very soon. But before, let's go to Yehuda Rubin, who is so patiently waiting online. I don't know, he, I think he's waiting since before Yom Kippur for the show. Are you waiting online since before Yom Kippur, um, Yehuda? You there, Yehuda? I'm on. Yeah, you are. You, you, were you waiting on the phone since before Rosh Hashanah, or you, you just came on? I'm not sure. Just came on. Ah, okay, good. How are you doing, Yoda? How are you doing, Yoda? Good. Good, very good. Baruch Hashem. Very good. How anyway. the, the new year by you? How the new school and everything? Good. Yeah, right, I, excellent. Eight, you eight, don't sound so enthusiastic, but uh, I'm waiting for your, your story. It's great. Listen. Yeah. Anyway, to the kids' radio we go with our junior reporters. We will not accept phone calls until we are done with the kids' reporters. We only have one today, so let's not worry about that. As usual, we start with the story of the week to the story we go at the story station. Standing by the veteran junior storyteller, Yehuda Rubin, with the story of the week. Yehuda? The title of this week's story is The Sukkah of Ravina Refused to Enter. The Sadiq of Pinchas of Karts didn't have a moment of peace. There, there was no shortage of suffering people. Some needed a bracha for health, some for children, still others needed a bracha for parnasa. Since the couldn't turn away from the other people, they came to him day and night, knocking on his door, crossing their hearts. Pinchas did, did all he could for them. One day, Pinchas happened that he should become disliked by other people. Then he would be free of their demands. And so it was from that day on, no one wanted to have anything to do with him. When Sukkot came around, he tried to find someone to help him build a Sukkah, but no one was willing since everyone hated him so much. He had to hire a guy who was willing to do the work, and when he needed to borrow tools, even that wasn't easy because of the hate that his neighbors had for, it, for him. After he was happening on the first night, your uncle wanted to do the mitzvah of inviting guests to the sukkah, but no one would accept his invitation. When he arrived home, he entered the sukkah and began chanting the traditional invitation to the first of the Shpizen. When he looked up, he saw Avram Avina standing outside the door of the sukkah. Your uncle saw that this year, Avram was unwilling to enter, and he cried to him, why don't you come in? What did I do? Armavina replied, I have the custom to only enter the place where guests are welcome. Rapinkos understood that from that response that he had been wrong in what he was doing. From then on, he did all he could to help other people. At the story station, this is Yehud Rubin for the Kishrani RNJ Radio. As usual, Yehud has great stories. Well, thank you so much, Yehuda. As we are watching Maya Licht prepare here um, with his batteries and stuff, let me tell you that if you are a boy or a girl between the ages of 8 and 14 and you want to do a report, you can text us at 347-927. Text 347-927-8398. Let's do that number again. 347-927. Text 347-927-8398. Leave us a message. Tell us your name, date, well, not date, I mean age, and tell us... Um, that you want to be a junior reporter, and we will be so happy to take down your number, name and number, Moshe Zohar, already here, and he will take down your name and number, will Mitch, I'm being in contact with you, and will bleed nada not reject you. You know what's the Kishwani motto? Well, if you don't know this, listen right now. No time to reject it, and no child to refuse. Well, science is a tremendous tremendously important thing in the world. Science teaches us how the world works, and we as Yidden, we have a different purpose in, in understanding science. We want to know how Hashem runs the world. I mean, we don't have to know how He runs the world, but we want to be able to appreciate what He does in this world. Right, Maya? It's true. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we hear you. So, 
Mayut here. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. So I have a book at home, but it's not exactly what you do. It's, it's more about the, the body um, science. I have a book at home from Reb um, Avigda Miller. Right, it's a it's little book with a picture of an apple on it. I'm sure you saw it in stores. And uh, I bought it because I saw it from Avigda Miller. He's uh, absolutely infatuated with his toes. So I bought it. And uh, he goes through the entire body. And he has uh, somebody wrote it based on this toes. He didn't write it, Rabbi Goldberg. So he, he wrote it based on what Avigda Miller says. And he goes through the entire body. I'm up to the bones. No. Uh, you know, the, the, the science behind the bones and what goes in, what, what is in the bones and, and how many things it does. It, it's an amazing, amazing piece of art that the Ubrahim did. In fact, the whole world is a piece of art. If we understand what goes on, we can see the godless of the Ubrahim in everything that we see. You walk outside in the street and you see a tree, you see the godless of a, you walk and you see an apple, you see the godless of a, Rabbi Victor Miller used to say, my, that, um, imagine you go to, I don't know, your bakery, your local bakery, you buy a bread, and when you finish the bread, you find a small coupon, and the coupon says, go get a free bread. So you take the, the coupon, you go to your local bakery, and you get a free bread. When you get it, you open it, eat it, you find another coupon, and it just keeps coming. Every time you finish the bread, you find another coupon. You have bread for free. So this is what a branch de did. You give us an apple, we finish the apple, inside comes a free coupon, it's a, a few seeds. seeds. You put the seeds in the ground, you have a whole tree. And you finish the, those apples, you put the seeds in the ground, so it like keeps coming. And that's how we look like, the Kavar Yasha said, that when you walk out on the st street in the morning, you should look up and say, Look up to the Shemaim, look up to the heavens and see who built all this, who created all this. Last week's parasha. Anyway, so we're so happy that you came here tonight, Maya, for the second time. Uh, that showed that you, uh, you know, that you, you like this place, and uh, we're so happy that you're showing this, uh, um, this love to Jaywood Radio. So what do you have for us tonight? Well, first of all, I want to start off. Yes, thank you, Rebbe Bonson, for having me here tonight. Um, I was here last year, I think it was the middle of the winter or so, and throughout the summer, this past season, I've been going to many camps, day camps, yeshivas, bungalow counties, you name it. And in many places where I bumped in, you're the guy from, that was on j Rick Radio? <laughs> so, yes, they s heard it, many of them, and did not see stuff live. Um, well, now we're I, live. You have some live, and some kids are just listening <laughs> from the phone or so on. And these kids have seen throughout the summer, throughout my career, the last three years, many interesting, exciting stuff, which I tie into, and I call it one, two words, Neflua Saboida, because that's what it is, really. You know, the, they ask me, what's, how do you say science in, in Lushan Kodesh? And how do you say science in, uh, I know Nevrit is a word, but how do you say in Lushan Kodesh? What's word in Nevrit? I, I forgot it now. Madda. 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 Which that means is to, know. to know, right. It is, is everything, how everything works, to know. Mm -hmm. But the real Lushan Kodesh word is Neflua Saboida, and if anybody wants to turn it and twist it other ways, uh, he's starting off in the wrong uh, direction. To, to the Meidah, to, to understand. Last time I was here, I was showing freezing stuff on liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is, a, is an unbelievable gas, something that uh, I just don't stop. I don't get enough playing with it at home, in my house. You know, we, uh, we need freeze pops or something frozen instantly. We take out uh, some liquid nitrogen and we <laughs> freeze it. You know, we got in 30 seconds, we got... We got some good stuff at home. I, I, I forgot to ask the last time, and I wanted to ask, I keep forgetting that. How long does it stay frozen? The same amount of time after liquid? Uh, it should be the same amount of time. Wow. Basically the same amount of time. It does have a little taste different since the texture is different, since it's frozen so fast. And kids at home, you know, if you take anything amount, everything, because the taste buds taste, uh, not only does it have the taste, but it, it really works with the texture as well, the feel, you know. Uh, feeling something, and if it's like slushy, or it's icy, or it's, uh, you know, this feel and that feel, it can help change the taste as well. So therefore, these freeze pops can have a drop different taste than you used to buying in the local grocery store. So that's what I did last time, and I we did a balloon, today, we did a balloon, we did a lot of interesting stuff with liquid nitrogen. Like I said, in basically everything was chemistry, it's called. And anything of chemicals, changing with chemical reaction, it's all tied into chemistry. I thought I'll bring something a little different, which is called 
which is tied into physics, uh, moving and so on, some you know, motion, um, and maybe even, and I, I know you see some liquid nitrogen over here. It looks right. like I'm, I'm going to be doing some, some, doing some it chemistry. Looks like you're well, going to blow up the whole building with that. No, almost, you know, uh, let's not talk too loud. But actually brought this liquid nitrogen to teach some physics. Really? Which is very interesting, and I have something really exciting at the end of the show that I want to show you, which I picked up from a doctor, a scientist in Eitz Yisrael. Um, his name is Dr. Boaz Almag, and I so happened to meet him even last night in, uh, in Manhattan. It was an interesting uh, um, event that I went to, some science event. Also creating interesting stuff for kids to be able to play with electric through Lego. That's really exciting. I think kids would love to play with electric, and they know they're starting to play with the batteries. You go into classrooms. Yeah, boys at home, you know that. You go at home, you start playing with some batteries and some wires, some twisters, and you're playing around at home with some stuff, and all of a sudden, stuff are getting hot, and you don't know what you're doing, and it can be dangerous. So you got to really watch out what you're doing. And this guy is creating something which is really kid-friendly. You can go home, and you know those little Legos? I was sitting at home at, in this event last night, I felt like I'm an eight-year-old child or a 12-year-old child sitting at home playing Lego. Well, I was sitting with 30 to 60-year-old guys, and we're sitting around tables, and we were pl actually playing Lego. And we were building machines. We were building, lighting up fixtures. Um, many things we were doing just with building Lego, which this Lego has something tied into it, which is uh, some electricity tied into it. So it's something that I think kids are going to really love once it really hits the market can be really exciting. Now, one of the things I saw kids playing a lot with is magnets. I'm sure you've seen magnets. I brought here a magnet, which is really, it's called an earth magnet. They're way, way stronger. Uh, you know, you just click it, you know, it just hits you and it can snap your fingers as well. Use it for a lot of good stuff to hold stuff really tight as magnets. What, what, how are they different than the other one? They're just very, very strong? And made out of different materials, so they're uh -huh. very strong just for trying to try to break them apart is, is, is oh, just wow. extremely hard, yes. Really, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, when, uh, so playing with these magnets, you have to watch out. But they say the only safety concern is you might get a good pinch. Mm -hmm. That's basically the safety concern. Well, magnets could create some electricity, some energy. And I put together something over here, which kids at home, anybody can do this. And I've done it with kids at home, with social groups. I've worked with kids. And uh, boys could put together this themselves some copper wire, some battery, and some magnets can actually create some machine over here. And I'm going to try to start this machine by connecting these three things together. And there I go. Some magnets just jumping. Let's keep that to the side. I'm going to try to get this moving just a little bit. And as you can see, let's just get a little bit of motion. And Rabbi Bonsi, you saw me putting this together before the show. And Right before you started, you got this little moving. I'm going to try this one more time. Mm. So, so you took a wire and you shaped it in the shape of what luchas or something. <laughs> right, because I have to get the. The one thing it's connected to the bottom of the, it's of not the magnet. Not connected. It's it, we're taking it around, so we're getting some electricity, the magnet, and getting some energy going through the batteries, right. which that's getting you electricity moving up and down. Oops. Uh, one second, but uh, and the goal is it should turn, it should turn. It should turn, and it should turn really well. And as you there can see, go. it starts, till it flies off, which that happens. So this is just, with some magnets and battery, we can so create some motion, but this is not really what I wanted to bring over here. The truth is, if you, have you ever traveled on a train? Mm -hmm. Well, trains go pretty fast. You're talking about 60 miles per hour can reach, you know, a little more. How about a train that goes over 300 miles per hour? Right. How do you get to such a difference in trains going so slow? And do you have trains that go 300 miles an hour? Yes, and that's in the works, and hopefully we'll get to it. And yeah, really? we're going from one end of the country to the other end of the country. Wow. In fast. Japan, in Japan, you have it in, in Europe. Japan, that's what we're going to get to. Miles yes. Hour in yep. wow. bullet, 31 the or something. Bullet, bullet train. Ma yeah, it's magnet magnetic, train. magnetic, magnetic. Uh, magnetic field. field. So that's why I, I brought here a certain interesting idea. It looks like a copper pipe or something, right? Like it, which actually you can create some sort of uh, um, some sort of a, a track to you know train to go around in a magnetic field, and this I'm going to show it in a small scale, and then hopefully we'll show you in a bigger scale, much more efficient, much more better. 
which is really a works, like I said, in Tel Aviv University and, and other places like Israel and other places around the world are really working really hard to get to that point, which that should be a really exciting time once we get trains moving. And the idea is to get it off the off uh, gravity, like off, um, uh, you, you know, it shouldn't touch anything, it shouldn't have any... Uh, um, it's not. Uh, Excuse me, should I jump over that? It's basically the friction. The friction, that's what I want to say. Yeah, no friction. Yes, that's what the word. Yeah, no yeah, friction. We want no, no friction. We got the big scientist over Listen here. This is a scientist from the... From I what's graduated. Called? <laughs> what's it called? The, 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 the army division? The marine. No. no we, what? The, the electronic warfare. Electronic warfare. So, like I said, if we can build some sort of field with magnets, which really repel... I mean, we know magnets come together or they pull apart. Right. If you can get something to pull together and pull up in time, we're having something that's in the ear somewhat, not move away because it's pulling, but not be able to go all the way down because something's pushing it up. So mm -hmm. we have that both magnets, the opposite, you know, kids play a lot with magnets. Hey, we connect this and that and that and this, and then the, and all of a sudden they're connecting one magnet from one side of the hand and the other side of the hand. So let's see if I can get this going. This is a just oh, this is on its so own. Cool. In a copper wire, okay? We're getting some electricity so this, and magnets so going one through. Thing, so this is like the train, and it goes through the copper wire. Copper wire is sort of no, sort of going to be in the ear. So, 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 so it's jumping back and forth. Jumping, between. making a certain magnetic field, and there's a certain magnetic field also helping it push forward. So look, we're having a battery train mm -hmm. over here, just a very simple. So you have to have very strong magnets? or you have to have very strong magnets. Uh -huh. So that's and and we will it go back with also to, um, towards Japan? It has, it has to work really with the opposite way. I mean, so if I set it up the magnet a certain way, oh. this way it won't go. Uh, mm -hmm. It might work somewhat. So again, it's all set up right to be able to move back and forth. Okay, whatever. So this mm -hmm. is basically, in a, like I said, it's interesting. Kids can play with it. This is very kid friendly. So again, so you so take a copper wire. It has to be copper? It or? has to be copper wire. Okay, it's not a wire. What is it called? Like a they call it a... a, um, like a, a, a you'll find it in Home Depot or some uh, like hardware a hardware store, okay? It's a copper wire. It looks like, a, what's it called? A, a spiral. I like made it a spiral. Oh, you made You're it doing it. You're doing it. Take it. Oh, you I made, you made spiral. it a spiral? Oh. This was, this was job. So, so job. just, okay, let, let me just, because I, I, I know... But let me just jump over because I know the kids doesn't understand exactly where you make it. You take a regular copper wire, number 14 gauge, and this is like uh, this, uh, maybe even 18 gauge, right. and take it on a sticks like like a, a broomstick or whatever stick that you just run it around it, round right. it round, round, you know, and as long as possible you can get more effect, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is what how you create this coil. It's basically called coil, in, in right. electronics uh, coil. Coil is a total different way of the electrons really run, running away, you know. And the inside the coil basically create the electromagnetic way, uh, mm -hmm. field. field that's going now, around around. what happened, they coming with another electromagnetic for a magnetic field. And this is, if you take two magnets and put it against south and south, it will push it away, right? right. You north and south, it will be pull it, right? right. So this is exactly how it's working. Basically, the two cut view, two polarized or phase of the magnet, the electromagnetic field that created in between the the, the, the push and pull, push and pull crea a movement. That this is how it's go going to working. I think I understood five percent. Me too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry that I <laughs> <laughs> like I no, and it's good. I just don't that's understand. That's why I like it. coming here when I want to have a. a I don't understand on, this field at all. On on site, uh, um, scientists. <laughs> that's that's the way really to go about it. It really is. It, it's science. fascinating. I just don't understand it. No, so, so this is this is just a very like like I said a kid friendly idea. Mm -hmm. Now, how about bring it a little bit on a bigger scale and bringing something different, which can make it more exciting and more fun, and which is really a work in the process, but hopefully we'll reach it one day. Now that was magnets. Now if you see I have here a field of magnets. Okay. These magnets are way stronger. I mean the same idea, same made it's, it's in a it's in a metal. It's put in a nice place and here I have a magnetic field which goes in the in the circle. One second, okay. what is this thing made for? This is like We're gonna see in a second what it's made for. I'm gonna okay. demonstrate what I wanna do here. 
And now I'm going to use some liquid nitrogen, which is a real fun, exciting gas to use. And always, and I, just to be a little bit safe here, I'm going to have to, once again, I feel some scary stuff, no? You're afraid? Please. I'm not keep afraid. Last time, last time I, I survived the experience. I'm going to take some liquid nitrogen. Uh, and you're putting on those huge goggles or yes. whatever they call. So it's called safety goggles. Safety yes, safety goggles. Safety is number one. I'm going to fill up these cups over here with some liquid nitrogen. And I so it's like a liquid gas, right? This is a liquid gas. As you can see, let's see if you can see some coming out. I see the liquid gas coming out and the smoke all over. Yes, there you go. Don't be afraid of anything. Just don't touch the ball. There you go. That's one cup. Let's fill up another cup. Okay, now we have two cups full of liquid nitrogen. Now we can make a coffee to drink. No, not exactly. Ice, ice coffee. Ice coffee. And look now at the look at the the, the 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 smoke coming out. Oh my God! And this so is much smoke the coming smoke out. The smoke that we see here is really showing us that this is slowly evaporating. Uh huh. Right. Okay. You it's, said that last time. Yes. So slowly we're getting. We're not gonna it's have a, it's too like much dripping left smoke. It's not just. It's not just. It's, it's it really looked. Why are they going downwards? A cool smoke. You know, is, 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 it's not really smoke. This oh, is hot smoke goes up. And it's not from fire. This is, made, this is really water vapor. Right. That's really this is. Um, the hot air with the cold water is creating this water vapor mixture mm. over here. Condensation. Condensation. There you go. That's where we get rainwater as well. Mm -hmm. Now here I have something, some plastic holder, which inside is something that's called a superconductor. Okay. Made out of some ceramic material. And in order to become a superconductor, which will create an interesting field on top of magnets, we have to cool this down to minus 321 degrees. How do you do that? Well, very simple. We put it into some liquid nitrogen. And once in liquid nitrogen, we will cool this up. Just don't touch any of these balls. We're going to cool it. Oh, watch those balls is going down. You should be safe. We're cooling this down. What are these little balls? That's really liquid nitrogen. Uh -huh. So they're like Showing bubbles out. or something? They the touching the, the round it really becomes like any drop of liquid nitrogen that touches out the warm ear creates like a little cloud a little around it right. like water vapor that's so what happens if I around. touch it? You might burn yourself. Oh, if you really? squeeze it really well, yes, you're gonna burn yourself. Just yeah. like if you have a wort, I'm sure. A good burn. A what? A good burn. A very good burn. Right. Yes. You know, don't touch Prost it. Prostate, real good burn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So we're gonna I'm going to take, take it. I, I, it's cooling down as long as it's bubbling. We know there's still a, a cooling air. You know, I want to get some bubbling a little less. I should be fine by now. I'm going to take out this superconductor, and once it's out, I'm going to put it on top of a magnetic field. Now, this superconductor is not made out of any metal or any magnet, as we're used to. And let's see what happens when it jumps on top of magnets. Now, we all want to fly. We all want to be in the air. We all were thinking of different technology be flying in the air. Let's get something in the air, not through magnetic, the attaching, you know, two magnets or metal. Let's see. Let me just take this out. To be honest, I'm going to... There you go. Careful, don't burn yourself. Uh, whoever knows, it's, it's almost impossible to burn yourself from... This cup is a little bit, thank you for the cup, but it did a good job. Here we go. Now we got this thing over here. I'm going to put it right down over here. And let's put it right on top of magnets. And here we go. Watch this sit right on top oh of magnets. Oh, my gosh. It's floating in the now air. It's really floating because the interesting part is I can really move it a little sideways. <laughs> Look at this. And move it a little bit like this way. And slanting this way. And this is really locked into the field. How about if I do it this way? Don't touch it, don't touch it. It's very really cold. I like, you know, I'm playing around Let's with it. Like this. Now the question, you want, you want to see upside down, huh? Right. You want to drive in a train that's upside down as well, huh? Let's see if that works as well. So let's connect it over here. And we wow. see it completely levitating, which means it's floating. Totally. Hmm. Totally floating. It now, it's like blowing it off, and it's not moving still, which means it's locked into this field. This is one of the hard, real hard parts, understanding how this works, quantum levitation, some physics. Boys at home, please don't listen to what I'm saying. It's too complicated for me. And maybe... Uh, yes, I probably understand. Yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll explain it soon. So this is nicely floating on air. So this is interesting. But what happens 
if I take this same idea now and try to do it a little different, a little different, and that is, we're going to take it and put it on a circle, a circle field. As you see here, we got a circle field of magnetic, right. and we're going to try to put it in a circle field and try to get it in motion. So let's see now. Now you're taking out the other one. Taking the other one or whatever, just try to get so it. So the first one is already warm and you can't use it anymore? I could, as long as it's cold, can be used. Once it warms up, it falls down, which means that the train is going to be warming up. What's going to happen? It's going to fall down. It's going to fall so down and then we got a big trouble. So, what, what, so how do they keep it cool? Keep it cool, you have to keep on using some liquid nitrogen, which just like you have a tank of gas, um, you know, just by yourself, you have a tank uh, in the train, just regular gas. Well, you can have the same idea with liquid nitrogen. Just a mm. tank filled up in the bottom, and we're going to, let's see, let's get this now on a circle motion right over here. And once it's here, I just have to get it a little circle, a little turn, some, you know, uh, action so going. So how did and it's it driving turns around like a this. Wheel. That's it. It's so following the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. It's going around, just following this magnetic field. Can you imagine just having the train one little push with some ways they're going to be working on, and all of a sudden the train just drives by itself, no, 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 mo electricity. no electricity, no nothing? Can you imagine? How about upside down? Let's see if we can get that as well. We're going to put the baggages on this train, I don't know, on your head. If you put it upside down, how are you going to stand? I'm still fascinated by this. So we're really uh, in motion right now. Mm -hmm. Now, the truth is there's two countries in the world that have something similar to this, and that is Japan and Germany. Mm -hmm. They both have a magnetic... They all, boys and girls, I think, at home read a lot about the maglev train. Maglev train really does work with a plus and minus, which are north and south, um, magnet, which is, like I said before, it's pushing up and pushing down, a little bit different... Part of it is used with such superconductor and so on, so it floats in the air and it could go 300, over 300 miles per hour. In Germany, they have a train that works with electri electric magnets. Now imagine if you have m a magnet pushing over here saying connect. So this starts connecting. But then you leave go the electricity and all of a sudden the train should fly down. Right. You put on the electricity, train goes up and so on. That's very good. Imagine going up and down like that. Now, put that electricity on and off faster than you can ever imagine. Right. Or try opening and closing the light at home, boys and girls at home. Open it and close it so fast. What are you going to see? You're going to see light and you're going to see dark. Okay. So this train, if you're putting it up and down, up and down, up and down, what happens is the train is in midair. It wants to go down, but it wants to go up. It wants to go down, it wants to go up. And therefore, the train stays. So mid. what's what's the what's the, the advantage that it's in midair? No, no friction. No friction. When there's no friction, you can just go way way faster than regular. Uh. Our problem is friction. It touches on the floor. The train is rolling on those tracks. You're making it stronger, and half of the gas is just going out, and then and then just by driving on the, the tracks, just by that motion. Half of the, the energy and the electricity. And, and so the that's one of the reasons the plane can go faster because it doesn't have friction. No, that is the airplane has a friction. Has a friction. The air, the air friction. Right. Uh -huh. friction uh -huh. We're pushing but the air. The, the, the idea. Look, you have, why, why you have tires. You have tires in the car. For example, car. You have tires. Mm -hmm. You have then you have uh, the bearing. You know, the ball bearing was right. reduced. You know, with the ball bearings, with small balls inside, and this to reduce the amount of touching point to the wheel and mm -hmm. basically exactly the wheel that's that's happened but here this is is nothing to do with touching any uh, uh, object you take your hand and you you know scrub your table and you see how much heat it will create or two end together right that's it energy. create energy that's basically this is that will create by friction right but now that i uh -huh. Okay, so, so why won't the train have air pressure, air friction? What do you mean? The, the train. Yeah, they are dead, well, but they well. do it. But then the, the shape of that is like a bullet and like a car. Also the car. When you design a sports car, 
you design it that you have the, the uh, spatial air, uh, what do you call aerodynamic way to reduce the air pressure mm -hmm. that's that's uh, uh, so they have they, they have calculated the computers and everything the sensor calculate everything and I want to tell you jumps jump jump something else when we used to shoot for example kind of racket or you know in the army you we have the old days we had to calculate the wind so, you know uh, strengths and to how to, to adjust our 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 and you know navigate our racket to that location and that everything has to be calculated mm -hmm. today the computer is doing it Okay, so you set up a little ta little coffee table here. What do you set up here? Hey, well, no, coffee table. Well, we're talking nicely, and you know, in theory, we're having some tracks, we're having some uh, trains, and so on. Can this actually work? So I brought over here a magnetic field and a setup of another kind of track. This is our track. Oh, this is the track. This is our track. So this is magnets, these little pieces? These little pieces are magnets. Mm -hmm. Now we have to try to put a train on top and start moving. So we got a nice circle set up here. Now let's see if we can get this moving by using one of these pieces over here, these super conductors. So let's see. Uh, I'm having a little, I'm just tucking just a little too small to get anything out of it. Let's see if we get it. Here we go. It should be fine in here. And let's take this now and put it right on top of our track, just about over here. This is perfect. And oh, let's gosh. See if we can get this a little bit in motion. Now, if it falls off, please do not touch it, okay? Just let's see if we can get this in motion. There we go. Just driving around our tracks nicely. It's going uphill, downhill. There we go, here we go. And this little, what's it called? The superconductor going up, uh, going. This is absolutely amazing. And this is all in midair. This is exactly what, this is what the train is all about? This is what it is. Look how this fast it's going. How fast are you going now? And it's without falling any out. energy without yeah. under one first push, without only one push. push. That's mm -hmm. Following the thing now, how long will it last until the superconductor starts warming up? Which uh -huh. is, I have a little pouch over here, which some liquid nitrogen does go inside, so it like keeps it cool, but not enough to keep it, you know, forever over here. So mm -hmm. I gotta get here one more over here and try to do the same idea. How about this way? Upside down. We always try to do something different, right? You know, the boys in the classroom, when the rabbi gives a certain rule, what do the boys and girls do the first thing? You have to try to try it differently, it. right? You gotta try, try to beat it, right? Well, the truth is in science, that's what it is. Science is everything about trying, and you gotta try and you gotta watch what you're doing because, unfortunately, and I'm sure Nissen knows. Nissen knows more than me how many accidents happen. Just in trying. trying certain science and laboratories and so on. Unfortunately, many, many, many such stories. All right. So you got to watch out what you're Tri doing. Trial and error. That's the whole life, right? That's, that's, that's what science is. So I'm going to take that now. Nissim has a smirk, some kind of <laughs> smirk. Oh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what he did in, in the Army. That he, he lived through one of these uh, episodes. One of these the trial and error episodes. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not jealous in my parents when they, I was young. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, let's go. Let's hear the whole story. When you were young, you tried all these things. Oh, we had. Uh, I used to be. I used to belong to a Noah Noah You know, it's like a, a science yeah, club. A science science club, and we used to build rockets. I used to fly rockets. Wow. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I was to build the rockets and fly them. How did okay. you, how I, did you I, learn uh, how to do that? Yeah, no, Listen, I got to have a meeting with you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I once interviewed Nissim, asked him about his life. He never told me that story. We have to do it again, Nissim. The good uh -huh. stories. The stories that uh, boys and girls shouldn't hear. Maybe. Shouldn't hear. No? <laughs> I don't know. Like when, 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 when the father goes over to, you know, starts talking at home and he says, kids, please go to sleep now. Yes. I got to talk yes. something really important. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, let's see what okay. I can do. I'm going to try to just get this train driving on the opposite, <laughs> upside down. So we're using out. the same superconductor, and we're going to put it on the, what's this called again? The magnetic field. Magnetic field. Round magnetic field. And let's see if I can get this good. Hopefully it works. And if not, you throw me out of here. There Sweet. we go. Oops, let's just get this moving in the right direction. Oh. And look at this. 
It's going and it's going faster and worse. Don't, please don't touch it. That's easy. Woo. Now this does warm up. And if it warms up, it will fall down. Right. Don't think we're going to have such a small hole with liquid nitrogen on so, the train. Okay. We'll have much bigger... But I have two questions. First of all, why is liquid nitrogen less expensive than le electricity? Or is that not the point? The point is not the money. The point is just the fastness of... The truth, the truth is we're using a lot of gas, right? To use, right. Um, whatever you use for, for, get, for a train, I'm not sure. Diesel, whatever it is. Right. Liquid nitrogen is way cheaper. Cheaper than... than yes. Ha, okay. And no pollution. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's much more... Cl it's clean. clean. It's clean. Well, we have 70% of the air that a person breathes is made out of nitrogen gas. Mm -hmm. So it's really a very safe, good gas that Hashem created around us. And to make use out of it, you know, this is, mm -hmm. this is something uh, It's really going to bring exciting. all the yid into to Yerushalayim when the time comes. That's yeah, probably the purpose. Wow. Three you know, by the way, by the way, the potato chips, right. that in the nice bags, you know, bumpy, fluffy, mm -hmm. like this, they just a drop of one drop of uh, liquid, nitrogen. liquid nitrogen inside. And it blows and it up. It blows up and it fr keep it fresh. It's fresh. And it's no oxygen that to oxidize the, the food and get rotten. Now we know oxygen for us, we need oxygen. But oxygen for food, not good. Uh, not good. That's where all the mold comes. And right. That's so the liquid nitrogen uh, eats up the, uh, the it's oxygen. It's basically taking the Take space of the... Yeah. Of the uh -huh. Like vacuum packing or whatever, yes. you're taking out the oxygen, same yes. idea. Mm -hmm. Got it. I feel like an Uwe. I feel like I. Uh, okay, whatever. Well, go listen. Ahead. You, you I, go ahead, you I, scientists. I don't, I'm not a scientist. I start off really having some fun with boys and girls and showing them interesting stuff, which is really. And end up being really an entertaining, which is educational. You know, I wanted to make some fun for kids. You know, like we all know magic. You know, I, I, I learned lately, I, I learned a trick that the magicians are using very often, very. And I, was, I used to watch the magician doing it. And when he did it, I said, wow, how did he do it? And you know something? I walked away not knowing and not getting educated. Just, oh, and he fooled boys and girls at home. You know, this, you know, do you like being fooled? No one likes being fooled. And especially, you know, us Jews, you sit at a magic show. There's so much talking going on. You know why? I know how he did it. I know what he did. And he's... Talking to a friend, I'm sure I, he did this and he hit this and did that. At my shows, n that talking is not there because I really tell everybody what I'm doing and I show it to them and everything's real. So there's nothing like, oh, I'm hiding. I'm not hiding anything from anybody. So I'm going to show you something that I watched the magician doing and I said, wow, until I found out this is not even a trick. This is real stuff. So I know nobody likes fire in the studio over here, but I think a little bit of fire can I go for? Okay. Just, I think when fire, I throw it with me. No problem. So we're okay. going to take here a piece of paper and light it on fire. Okay. okay. Let's watch what happens. Okay. Just don't light the whole studio on fire. No, not the whole studio. We're just going to get our, you know, our pants, pants literally here on fire. Yeah, that means. Okay, here we okay. go. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. And? Hey. Hey. Shh, don't tell anybody where I put that paper. Well, that looked, you know, look, something happened to it. And I watched a magician doing something, fire, and the cards were just disappearing, things were just going. I said, hey, what is this magician doing? It was very interesting to me. So all of a sudden I started studying a little science and looking into it. Well, this is really a real piece of paper. But something different to this paper, and that is, we spoke about oxygen, that's why I decided to just jump into this. Two things need a lot of oxygen, and that is us humans, and what else? Fire. Fire. Right. Fire needs a lot of oxygen. And there's no oxygen to fire, it will not burn. You yeah. know, we know we take a candle. Boys and girls, please do not try anything I'm telling you now at home. I know I know fire is a lot of fun. And I know what I'm, whatever I'm going to tell you now, do not do it. We're just going to try to run and I'm not going to say the next two cent words. So please watch out adult supervision for sure. So this paper, the only difference is it has loads of oxygen. We soak this in special chemicals, which give out a lot, a lot of oxygen, which got soaked into this paper. So this paper is full, full of oxygen. Now, if something has so much oxygen, the entire thing burns without leaving over any smoke, any black, like ashes, carbon. It completely, you know, gets a complete combustion, whatever. Everything gets completely burned. So again, taking this, has oxygen to it. 
a lot of oxygen, let's light this on fire, and just drop it in mid-air, and there it goes. No, it did not disappear, but it got completely burnt, every little piece of that thing. But how did it get burnt so fast? That's the question. Because there's a lot of oxygen. The more oxygen there is, if you try taking a big tree, try lighting a big tree on fire, you tell me how long it's going to take for you to light that big tree on fire. Okay. Oh, that takes long. Boys and girls, uh, you know, you go to camp. You try lighting the campfire. The head counts, though, the, the, the director there standing with buckets of gas and pouring it and trying to light that campfire on fire. You know why? Big logs are standing there. You can't just light big logs on fire. So what would be the best way to light it? Should we, li should we light it with paper? Just paper of the campfire that will burn for five seconds and that's no, it? No. Right? Now you try, these boys go, once a summer they usually go roasting some marshmallows. Now how do you make that fire for the marshmallows? Right. They pick up some twigs, little twigs. Right. And it takes with one, two, three, you're standing with a lighter and all of a sudden the twigs are burning. Why are they burning? Well, these little twigs have a lot of oxygen going around it. From one twig to the next, the air is oxygen oh, there, is right. flying through. So that's why it just burns in one, two, three. So instead of huge piece of log, small piece of log. Small pieces of burn. But that many, many small ones are better. Again, it's not going to last too long. So no. we have to go with the big No, but log. you can take long, long piece of log and stand and up like it's a... It's not going to hold... It's not going to... Again, it gets eaten up very fast, uh -huh. and the log will crack and fall uh -huh. down. And kids have seen campfires But also, all, when you build a uh, bonfire or campfire, you have to do it on top of each other with a space to the air going into it. Into it. You cannot just put a bunch Stop of it. stuff... You know, it's like... You have to, the right way to do it is like put like one and another like in the other direction, another... Like, Put like like uh, Miss Bear we call it, you know, like that the air will move. Otherwise, it will it will cut it stop uh, immediately. immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that is really oxygen. I, I just you know I was thinking you know we all are so preparing some for Hanukkah. B before you continue, what's that liquid that you you soak the paper in? Um, uh, that has a long name, and maybe Nissen could help me out. What's called that liquid? Uh, um, no. I forgot this moment. It has a, some long name to it. But where do you get it? But where do you find all these things? Oh, now goes the hard question. In, in you know the pharmacy? You know something? You know, you sit in a, I go to many audiences. The boys are sitting and watching and listening. While the fathers, the mothers, the first thing they come over, where do you hey, get? where do you buy this? <laughs> where do you get it? And how much money do you make? <laughs> Those are two questions that come right no, away. The first us. question, how much money you make? And after <laughs> yes, yeah, we're Jewish, right? That's not yeah. nice. That's not nice. nice. <laughs> so, yes, that's... Uh, um, you have to watch out where you're getting stuff, making sure you're getting it in very safe places. Um, unfortunately, there's so many uh, stories of... You know, with the, with the world of, of a lot of scary stories, and people are getting their hands on not the right material they should be getting their hands on, and we hear in the news too many... Sad stories happening at the end. I Hashem, everything that I get here is through real science uh, companies that are working to educate people, learning science, and that's where everything that I buy here is coming from. Mm -hmm. So I am completely, you know, said, uh, connected to science educational things. I know it's a lot of fun and exciting to watch, but everything I buy here is all bought on science educational um, companies. And I follow science educators because it's so dangerous. You know, listening, right? You don't know what you're doing. Yes, yeah. definitely. It, it's sad, you know. People are. It, I, I, I think I've told the story once. I've been to so many camps, and there were two instances, two camps that the council's watching me doing some, blowing up some stuff, and I said, "Hey, you know, next year, why do we have to call them now? Let's do it on our own." I know two such stories where the councils ended up in the hospital. Hospital, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> It was. It didn't end right. So you gotta like, really watch what you're doing. It's. Uh, it. You gotta really be careful. So what are you preparing for Hanukkah? No, you little know, pieces Hanukkah, of. Hanukkah, you know, we have some cotton. Right. So imagine some I'm using. Little cotton balls. Imagine I'm using these type of uh, nitro <laughs> nitro trellis or something like that. Is the, the name of the, the the. I have to remember now again of the chemical. So how about taking some cotton? I'm gonna try to do it maybe a little differently. Let's hold it in my hand, right? Right. Let's light it on fire now. While right. So again, it's full of oxygen. I ah, will find out now. This okay. is a cotton. We're going to use it for a wick for the menorah. Let's see if it's kosher even. Here we go. One, two, three. Done. That's it. 
Well, do you think this is kosher to use? No, you get, I can get burned. It's almost impossible to get burned. It's so fast. It's so fast. So fast. It's literally a second. Will this be kosher to use for Menoida? No, obviously not. Obviously not. No, but if it has, if, if it's going to start um, um, soaking oil, is it going to go fast or not? The top part of the wick is just going to get eaten up so fast that I doubt it. It will last more than, mm-hmm. like I said, a half a second. It's absolutely Im- fascinating. So in other words, it, it's soaked in, in some kind of liquid, and because there's so much oxygen, so the fire just devours it like really fast. And it burns out. The, nothing stays over. Right. When you burn a piece of paper, some of the paper is left. Right. And and, the, and the, reason is, the reason is because it doesn't have oxygen in it. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't get everything. This is <laughs> completely... It's so is it wet? Can I feel it? No, it's not wet. It's not wet. Well, it's it's not, that's why you should know. No, but it does feel like a little bit when of... When I buy this, I buy this cotton, and they ship it to me. When they ship it, they ship this soaked in water. Because mm-hmm. chas shulam, if this is near any fire, not even to, you don't have to be so close to the fire. This catches in a second. And imagine shipping on a truck, and the guy's holding his cigarette, and smoking, and just wraps it, that UPS Nothing will truck, happen because the whole UPS truck will 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 just flame up. No, but the fire will go out in a second. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's a big, a big quantity. <laughs> yeah, sending a big quantity of, of a, a nice amount of. Uh, I have a box of cotton. Yeah, it's gonna start burning, but it doesn't take long to burn another box. The box wouldn't take too long to burn. It, it literally burnt in, in a split second. But stretching out a little a piece very of cotton. In- intensive mm-hmm. fire. Yeah. Wow. Very intensive fire. This is fascinating. And like I said, if next time you see any magician who is making things disappear just by fire, so that's what it sorry, is. Sorry, nothing is disappearing. So that's what it is. He just buys what it is. just science, it's and then he pulls out another one from the fire, and he says, "Whatever it is, the, that car disappears, or whatever disappears, was soaked in soaked the in nitrocellulose, whatever the, the same same chemical that this is being soaked in the dust." Wow. So you were the one who's going to build the train. Who's uh, building the train? We're working on it. Like I said, I sat yesterday with this guy and his, his doctor, and uh, um, he has a lot of, uh, it's not only trains that they're looking to build, they're looking to build many other things, including uh, fiber wires uh, and other things that, that's going to help with electricity, that's going to work with superconductors. Superconductor has bec- become very, very big, <coughs> uh, I would say, material to the next generation. Mm-hmm. Computers, uh, motor, a- engines, any, anything that work over there. Mm-hmm. So the cars eventually one day are also going to fly in the air? Or? It's n- uh, you don't have to fly in the air, but you know, it just create less friction inside the system. And you don't you need know. wheels, because you but don't yes, have to go... Yeah, but, um, but you have to, you have to, kind of, uh, to use some... Uh, anyway, yeah. anyway, space. It, it, it's, like I said, it's not, tom- it's not the, the, the train of, t- of really tomorrow. It's the train of some... You know, uh, uh, like I said, they're not even working so hard in the trains that they're working on much more, like like Nissan said, on many other things they're working so on. So what did Israel have to do with this? You mentioned Israel. This oh. was made in This was made in this Israel. Israel. Yeah? This is an Israeli company. And interesting enough, you know, I was looking for this thing. I was searching for it, and all of a sudden I bump into a guy, and I'm e- emailing him back and forth, and all of a sudden he texts me back, and he says, you know, like something in Yiddish, and, uh, you know, he's telling me, uh, Shalom, or whatever. I said, hey, hey. Are you, where, where are you? Are you where, you know, you know, tell you send the email, you don't know which wor- part of the world you're sending it to. And he tells me he's a Jewish guy, he's a from Jewish guy, he's a family of Diana Hasidim and really? whatever, and living in Israel, and he works for this quantum levitation. So he works for this Dr. Boas that has this company. That's the uh, company name, Quantum Levitation? Quantum, quantum is, a, is, a, is the name, really, of this physics. It's uh-huh. called Quantum. quantum so we'll yeah. And levitation, he's levitating, you know, keeping you in the air. Right. So that's the name of the company. And many places around the world. I've seen big, big signs in America, the United States, and many other places in the world are using this company to demonstrate this idea. So it's, it's as well, you know, the... The brains. And you just look when I eat the cup. So, so, okay. Let's, let's step back a second. So they are actually building something, or they just make material, the Israelis? This Israeli company is, is not building a train. No, they're building. They make. They have a company of these 
type of tracks, all different types of ways to demonstrate quantum levitation. I know they're not building it. Mm. He's basically, it's a research company. It's not. It's a research company that basically building the 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 prototype of concept. of concept, and then they give it away. And they, all the the research uh, data they are giving it to the some company like the train company, computer companies, commodores company, and they sell this information because that's all idea is that they, they is really patent on this mm -hmm. to get to get as much as uh, as possible to the market to the commercial wow. market. It's really really fascinating. Uh -huh. So so that's the future. That's the future generation, flying cars. Who knows? Who knows what's next? We don't know what you know. What could Mashiach. jump in? Mashiach. Mashiach. Mashiach, right. It makes sense that one day, the, the cars will 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 float. Well, does it have to be mean that we're going to be floating with quantum levitation? No. There's a lot of the other technologies of flying cars that I'm I'm sure are in the making. I don't know which step they're up to. But it's in the research for sure. So why, I don't know. Why won't two trains collide if they're in the air? Well, this is locked into a place. Uh -huh. You cannot move this out of place. Uh -huh. It's it gets, locked. It gets technically locked into a place. They call it locked. And what happens locked. if there's, let's say, this, and and then there's a track right here? Won't like move to the other track? It locks in his field, in their own field. Again, not. But it how can, it can bump to each other? Yes, it can bump to each other if the polarity is opposite. But again, it's it's uh, because we're to dealing with today exactly. In the, in the regular subway, uh, you have you have some accident, but the computers running all this. You know what happened with the new cars that has no driver? Right. Again, they're bringing it's, it to the United it, New York City. That's the next step. Yes, yeah, the next step in Israel. It's already it's all running, and in California they already run some some uh, cars without the drivers. Right. So as the all the sensors, all the systems together, that it's it has to be protected and not not to come to this call. Uh, Collusion together. You know, I, I didn't get to it, but technically, you can have two trains running on the same track. And I've tested it. These two trains on the same track running in opposite directions. And what are they? Not touching with each other. How, how are they because not? Because the magnetic field is still going up. So again, they're still locking into his magnetic field. Right. And this can go this way, and this can go this way. I know, but why don't they collide? Explain to me. Because you lock it in the position you want. So if I lock it, let's say this height, and this car is oh. locked into this height, it gets locked here, and it does not move from here. Oh my God! This is so what? Uh, wow! I, it's, it's a little work. So, they want to so the, the same way. tracks can go two ways. Yes, correct. So, so the one on top, how does it pull to the tracks that's so far below? It's, it's mean, calculation it's of the magnetic field. It's two <laughs> floors <laughs> up. No, it's not the matter. <laughs> but listen, it's two floors <laughs> up. <laughs> <That's how laughs> And you have you have you have you have uh, a, a car that basically on top of the on the roof they have the magnetic field that right. some, and and the other one is and on the bottom so just you don't you have, you have the the uh, trucks is in between you know mm -hmm. so this is like this is running in the, the total different levels uh -huh. it's uh, so many you know believe me that's uh, everybody running. This, this is coming the the, the next uh, our next. Uh, Time of coming here. What listen, what are we gonna do with it? Okay. I'm taking <laughs> over the mic and I, I'm just gonna be the robot here. No, you know what? You know what? You you mentioned about oxygen and I know that we have really the uh, small uh, uh, time. Uh, that's one of the, the scary bombs is basically uh, benzene, benzene uh, or, or hydrogen. Uh, I, 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 what do you call it? You know what the hydrogen, hydrogen bomb. Hydrogen bomb. Hydrogen yeah, bomb. Yes. I didn't want to bring hydrogen here. I have it. No, no. But you know what happened? That's it's eating. It basically that idea that you spread. It's very flammable material, and you spread it in a space, and you light it up. It sucks all the oxygen from the area, and basically, all the everything stay as is. But any 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 living creatures without oxygen cannot survive and died so basically that it's the ideal uh, concord weapon that you coming over to those place you spray you, you just this this bomb and basically you get to a city with dead people and everything is completely so uh, how hydrogen is even found so it's so easy to get hydrogen but but understand but the, these people 
for one second you can live with that oxygen. No, no, it's not. So it's not worth it. It's sucking. It's sucking much. It's sucking the oxygen. Big, a big area. It's a big, big area and big. Uh, so where that bomb? It's been made. It's made. Been made. Unfortunately, it's made. Unfortunately, it's made. North Korea. Yeah, <laughs> the, the yeah. world develop. Uh, uh, they're developing uh, in all over the world, and uh, and unfortunately, we have a lot of evil people in the world, so trying to to create this kind of. Uh, Unbelievable! Wow. And uh, destruction. World. Anyway, uh, we have. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we have one minute to go. Thank you very much for having me over here, and really appreciate it. And I, all the boys and girls at home who have seen my show, I'm sure you had a blast. And I've been to places even two, three times. The kids just say, "Wow!" again. And it's not enough to see it all the time. You know, you can see it a hundred yeah. times, and it's you have to really teach. Uh, that's what I like about you. That you teach actually what you're doing, and it's not like as you said, it's not like a trick. You teach, so we l we go away learning something. It's anyway. And anybody who wants to book me for any show, I'm always available. Uh, oh, it's sort of available. 60-347-731-7901. Once again, that's 347-731-7901. Slowly again. 347-731-7901. Okay. okay, great. Anyway, okay, we have nine seconds left. Okay, thank you so much, Maya. I appreciate it very, very much, you coming. We'll certainly uh, invite you again. We much enjoyed it. Every time you come, it's fascinating here. Anyway, this is Yasser Leibornstein. I'll see you next week in Mirza Shem. Yoli Kar, um, official Sheikh to follow me then. Yoli Kar. And Yoli Kar is uh, Pruz. Pruz, right. Mike, Don't go away. Thank you very much. Anywhere, anytime, for everyone. This is...